Well, hello, hello. It's me, Sahara, with FYI YouTube. And I'm still looking at the beautiful pictures and music because I need to be in a proper mood to look at Prince Andrew's chart. So just look at the swan in the snow and think beauty and think of what a peaceful creature this swan is. I used to raise ducks, I'll tell you. The nicest things about ducks and swans is they mate for life. And if they lose their mate, they never stop looking for their mate. And if you are a widow or a widower, you might understand that feeling and this true, true love However, it wasn't that way for Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, a.k.a. Fergie, the Duchess of York, I guess she was. They're all duchesses, ladies, lords of something. So, um, the one thing about his chart is lots. Um, you would have a lot of fun with um, Ebertine's Midpoint book the combination of cellular influences with this chart because so many so many um, plants are at the same degree and um, if you if you look up how they all combine it starts to get very interesting and of course lots of this good however like Jeffrey Epstein Ghislaine Maxwell Bill Clinton we have the planets of love and Ghislaine and Jeffrey all had their two uh, love planets in Capricorn. And Capricorns are these reserved characters. They behave like aristocracy. They're so reserved, but then you take a look at their private lives and you're a little shocked. <laughs> they dress conservatively. They talk conservatively. Um, they might look down on a woman with big hair and loud clothes. However, you should look at their private life. If I'm not mistaken, Fergie's father was found tied up in a chair in leotards and a tutu dead from a heart attack. So you, you don't even know what kind of party that was. It's just one I don't want to attend. So, and you know it's funny, coming up to these two Capricorn planets of um, Venus and Mars, you know, these are re reserved planets. It makes you think they got too reserved. <laughs> they need an outlet. And um, he married Fergie, who was, you know, caught on film uh, by a pool, uh, making love to her lawyer with the two children playing nearby. So that was a scandal, to say the least. Um, but Pluto and Saturn are coming up to these planets. So by, by transit, you have um, Pluto, Saturn. These are making, these two transits in Capricorn, Pluto and Saturn are, as Saturn rules is, a, I mean, Capricorn rules government and order and the status quo. When you have these shake it up, it's like shake and bake. In the cosmos, you have um, Saturn, the great restrictor, and also, Pluto is like throwing, running into a room and throwing a, a spin bomb. So this is what's happening to the current structure of um, main countries at, worldwide. You know, uh, right now as I speak, there's um, protests in Hong Kong. They just finished with a successful protest in Puerto Rico. Then there was the yellow vest. What will it be next in a, a couple of months from now? It'll be something. But what we have here are the two love planets, Mars, Venus. They're going to get a shakeup. This, this problem with Prince Andrew is not going to go away. And it's going to be very upsetting. And sadly, too, I believe he has two young girls. Venus is young girls and Mars is young boys. So maybe you want to think about those things before you run off to Lolita Island. So 
um, you want to look at these two things together in Capricorn in the same sign as Ghislaine, Jeffrey Epstein, and Bill Clinton conjunct. Does that mean all people with this aspect are perverts? No, of course not. They're very magnetic and they, um, they attract the, se the opposite sex with a charm. This is charm. I love beauty. I love to be active. Mars is young boys and Venus is young girls. Perhaps we took this, these um, two magnetic combinations too far. I want to point out that he has Leo rising. Leo, all royals have um, Leo it's somewhere in their chart. It's going to be moon, it's going to be an ascendant and the sun. They all have Leo because Leo thinks they're king, Regulus. You know, that's, that's a king um, of Leo. And they think so, if you know a Leo. But they could become very fixed, stubborn as well. Uh, because they believe, here I am, I'm the star of the, of the universe. I'm the center of everything. Poor Leo looks at, looks at the uh, galaxy in the Milky Way and he is always shocked when he finds out that he's not at the center of the universe. So, what do we have here? Pisces. And I pointed out in Jude Lane and Jeffrey that early degrees, and this is zero of Pisces, Early degrees have a lot of urgency, as well as late degrees. Uh, just a late degree of any sign, they're going to be very urgent. They feel like they have to finish something up or start something. It's because these are the beginning and ending of signs. Um, Pisces has a little bit of a problem with self-worth. That is the whole thing about Pisces. You know, this guy would be very good as an archaeologist and studying Egyptology. This is the eighth house, psychology, uh, um, ancient secrets. Um, there's so many ways to use this, this Pisces in the eighth house. However, this is the occult. And rumor has it, and I'm pretty sure looking at the charts, that um, Prince, Prince Charles, and uh, Camilla, uh, they have seances. I'm really sure of it, but I'm a spiritualist. I would invite me over. <laughs> I love old castles and I love to have a seance. But if you're a spiritualist, you understand that is is connecting with the other side can be quite beautiful, and the other side often has guidance for us. So, but when you have Mercury in Pisces self-worth is a big issue. And I'm going to look at the Ascendant for a minute. So, um, self-worth. What do you have? We have the second born of the monarchy. So, who's first? Charles. Who's second? Andrew. Andrew doesn't count as much. You might think, hey, we're at the top of the societal and economic social structure structure do something good with it because both Charles and the two princes uh, um, children of Charles are very much into um, charity work so is Prince Philip uh, Andrew's father they're very into charity work they're well starting to become very well loved for their work with words wild cause I think Prince Charles has more worthwhile causes than you can imagine. You know, he's in his he's in his early 90s. He's done a lot of good. He has a lot of aspects like this too, but not quite not with not with all the Pisces in the eighth house. You know, problem with this is sex is also the eighth house is also magic. I want to see what's below the surface. I want to see what cannot be seen. So we have this very mystical occult sign. You know, you can go into study tarot, astrology, you're going to see what's below the surface. You don't have to fly off to Lolita Island and ruin the childhood of young people. And I feel that looking at these Mars, Venus planets for these four people so far, four, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, four people that, um, 
they're born into privilege and that they have the Venus Mars. So chances are there's a lot of energy to get all the goodies of life. So use it widely. Wisely he didn't. And if you look at Epstein's um, combination of stellar influences, combining all these things show a lot of answers. You have too many things at the same degree. Moon, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, um, the node, Chiron. So you have a lot of things at the same degree and you have Saturn and Pluto about to hit these two planets. So he'll be, he's, he's going to get to feel what the young people on the island had to feel. And uh, I hate to say it, but you know, you just, I just have nothing to say to this. Oh, here's the good part. Dun, da, da. This is the moon in Scorpio. More, more interesting is you have eighth house is watery. Pisces is watery. The fourth house is watery. Um, there's a lot of water here. Fire and water. So, uh, you have the two things together, but this is a lot of water. Very influenceable um, to a degree that uh, is so wishy-washy. It's not good. And there's skeletons in the closet of Windsor Castle. So, but um, Scorpio, they they are playing. They're playing a high game of poker, but they're not showing their cards. And I was in a class once, and the students were asking about Scorpios, and they said, "Why are they like that? Why is it so secretive? Yeah, this guy hides money. Sorry, he's got little coffee cans around and secret hiding places with money. So, um." I hope his little girls find it probably, I would say, under a floorboard. <laughs> Some cool stuff, jewels maybe, because Venus, this Venus Mars says, I like jewels. And um, you have, in asking the, um, a, the astrologer teacher, why are they like that? And she said, because they've been hurt before. They, they hold their cards close to their chest. They might be smiling on the outside. And here's a party guy, that's for sure. But we have a weak, weak will. Weak will because it's water, cancer. We have a weak will because it's Pisces, um, Scorpio. That's, a, that's a all water, water signs. So you have, I've known people with aspects like this. They're scaredy cats. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're scaredy cats of everything so they'll, they'll take the past of least resistance and also with that in mind sometimes they don't know right from wrong he has quite a good mind for computers I understand his father his father has an office that looks like uh, the Concord uh, dashboard and you know they, they like computers that's good they're doing good things however Prince Andrew is going to face the embarrassment the humiliation of um, what he's done before the uh, public. Does he deserve it? I don't know. Could he have avoided it? Yes, he needed a good astrologer to help him see his way through pos how to use these planets positively. But what's done on this earth plane is done and the, he will get, I don't know if this will make the news I have to look at the planets to see, can he keep this secret? He's done a good job of keeping some things secret. And there's money being hidden, hidden in the uh, royal family like crazy. In a wide opposition, we have Pluto in opposition to the sun. And this is, it's all about me. With a heavy duty aspect like Pluto, you need you need to study psychology and you need professional help because you've got to break out of that little tiny box you're in and look at the bigger world around you. I know you're a prince, you have the whole world before you, and uh, that you've got to get out of your own head. So that's what I'm saying to you, princey. 
So um, buck up, fess up, and we'll be seeing you on the airwaves. There's more to come, so stay tuned.